What's up growers, you're back for another microgreens video that's going to blow your mind rapid fire style with a whopping 25 tips you can take away today to improve your microgreens game. By the end of this video, you will definitely have some new ideas and knowledge that you can take back to your microgreens business right away and further enhance it. If you don't know who I am, I've been a commercial microgreens farmer since 2016 and I've also taught thousands of students about microgreens and running their microgreens business. I'm also the guy who pioneered the home delivery subscription model for the microgreens industry, and then went on to be featured in most of the microgreens business courses you can find online. Teaching microgreens is a lot of fun to me. I absolutely love this industry and I'm so excited to watch it keep on growing and I'm pumped to be able to share these 25 microgreens business tips with you right now in this video. But before we get started, I do wanna mention that this video is actually sponsored by Bootstrap Farmer. They are an awesome company who manufactures supplies and equipment for farmers of all different kinds and they do most of their manufacturing here in the United States, which is incredible. They're also the ones who make the best heavy duty microgreens trays that almost never break and these are actually the trays that I use exclusively. So definitely check out their website at bootstrapfarmer.com where you can find a whole bunch of different farming equipment and you should also check out their new microgreens blog. I'll put links for all of this down below in the description of this video, so go check it out. All right, let's get to those 25 tips to take your microgreens business to the next level. And by the way, let me know down below in the comments which tips you like best. I really appreciate your feedback and it helps me to teach you better. All right, 25 tips. Start small and work your way up. Before you start growing for profit, start growing for yourself. This will allow you to test the waters and learn the ropes, preparing you to provide the best service for your customers in the future. Start from your home. The last thing you want to do when you're first starting your business is making monthly rent payments before you're consistently profitable. Not to mention the tax benefits of running your business from home. Know your passion. What is your why? Running a business is difficult and understanding your purpose will give you strength to keep you moving forward, especially during hard times. Make sure you are comfortable growing before you start selling. Being confident in your grow will actually help you to close deals because that confidence will carry into your energy as you're trying to make those sales. Not to mention, you wanna make sure that you could actually fill the orders that you promise that you're gonna be able to fill. Take advice from people who are credible. Anybody can talk. That advice leads to bad habits and not everybody on the internet has the best growing advice, business methods, or sometimes not even the best intentions. So just keep that in mind. A weekly delivery service should be at the core of your microgreens business. The delivery aspect is a great way to enhance your offering as a business, making it super convenient for your customers to get their hands on your crops. It will also keep your business streamlined, predictable, and efficient. Get comfortable growing just a few core microgreens varieties at first before adding others to your weekly plantings. This will prevent you from getting overwhelmed in the beginning and will also help you to keep your seed costs down while holding less inventory. Sell a mixed box like my Sunny Sampler. You may just find that it becomes your best seller while also providing you with higher profit margins and less waste. It also makes it easy to get a new customer on board by having that go-to product. Create efficient systems for your microgreens business so you can think less while doing more. We already have brains that are overloaded with information, so the less you have to think about everyday tasks, the more mental capacity you will have for other parts of the business. Separate your tray making area from your growing area, especially if you're using something like a soil or a potting mix. This will keep your growing area very clean because tray making is the dirtiest part of the whole process and causes most of the mess and soil dust. Make sure your racks are level so you don't end up with unevenly watered trays. If your racks are uneven, the water is gonna flow to one side of the tray, resulting in that side of the tray getting overwatered and the other side of the tray being underwatered. Don't keep clutter in your farm that you aren't using. Keep it lean and clean and you can think about minimalism here. This will help to create an efficient flow in your farm space and allow you to move throughout that space more effectively. Plus, you don't want dead stagnant energy in your farm and you also wanna be utilizing every bit of your space for revenue generating activities. Use a super rack when moving trays to maximize your efficiency. A super rack is really a 
term that I coined, and it's a rack on wheels with many shelves on it that allows you to move more trays at once throughout your farm. It keeps you as efficient as possible and reduces your walking time between different spaces. Have fun with your microgreens. Growing should be really fun and enjoyable. At the end of the day, your happiness is really what's most important. So make sure you are happy with your business and don't be afraid to change things that you don't like. Buy high quality equipment the first time to remain consistent and not waste money early on. For instance, you wanna use trays that are sturdy and don't break rather than trays that break often, resulting in that equipment becoming a liability instead of an asset for your business that you can use over and over again. And by the way, I include links to all the different supplies and equipment down in the descriptions of my YouTube videos. So feel free to check those out and see the exact equipment that I recommend. Speaking of trays, one reason to grow in heavy duty, high strength trays that is often overlooked is the fact that you can actually carry two at a time. When that tray is filled with soil and, and plants that have grown, flimsy trays require you to use two hands to carry them, otherwise they'll break for sure. So being able to double the amount of trays you can carry at a time with the heavy duty strength trays is going to improve your efficiency in your farm. Use compostable packaging for a sustainable cutting edge in business. This packaging may be slightly more expensive, but it will give you peace of mind, not to mention it's just the right thing to do. And you can also use this as a marketing tactic for your business. Buy high quality seeds from trusted sources. Seeds are a very important factor in your microgreens production. So try out a few different seed suppliers and see which ones you like best. Only soak your sunflower for four hours. I've found that with most sunflower seeds, a longer soak time tends to reduce your germination rate and kind of causes the seeds to get like mushy. Stack your trays in germination instead of blacking out with a dome. I don't like humidity domes at all, honestly. I don't find them necessary. They can definitely lead to mold growth and they're not as space efficient when it comes to stacking. So why use this method if you don't really have to, if it doesn't make that big of a difference in your crops, if it can lead to more problems, don't do the blackout phase, just skip it. Stack your trays for germination. Use paint edging tools to clean off your tables. They work extremely well and efficiency is very important for running your business. Diversify your client base when running a microgreens business. This will lead to more revenue in general and more importantly, it will actually increase your business's resilience. Microgreens farms that served only customers when COVID happened lost all of their business at once. Think about that. Hire people you want to be around. If you're hiring employees and you're gonna be around them a lot, it's important that you like them. You don't wanna be forced to hang around people that you don't really like being around. Communicate with your customers and teach them how to use the microgreens. Education is important to your microgreens business and helping your customers to utilize your product will increase your average order size and decrease customer churn. Be active in the microgreens community. This will help you to stay consistently learning through other people's experiences while also being motivated by the wins of others. Not to mention running a business and being an entrepreneur can be lonely. So take advantage of microgreens communities like my microgreens support group on Facebook. There you have it. 25 microgreens business tips that you can use right away. I hope this video is useful if you have a microgreens business or if you're even just thinking of starting one. And by the way, if you haven't started growing microgreens yet, well, what are you waiting for? You don't have to worry about failing on your first trials of growing anymore because you can join my one tray away challenge that guarantees your success. I walk you through the whole process day by day, and there's a lot of other perks that come along with this challenge, but you can learn everything you need to know about my microgreens challenge at onetrayaway.com, or you can use the link below in the description. To learn if it's even still a good idea to start a microgreens business in 2024, watch this video or watch my other video to learn if becoming a microgreens grower is right specifically for you. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel and share this video with anybody you think it may help. Thanks again and I'll see you next time. Peace.